Hi guys, in today's video, we're going to be going through the history of the history as a faction in RTR Imperium, Serectum. This video was taken from a longer interview video that I did with Jottle that you can check out in the description down below. So check that out and make sure you like and subscribe while you're there as well, guys, and I'll see you in the video. So then, let's move on to the history um, over here in the very far north of Illyria on the uh, Histrian Peninsula. Uh, is the peninsula, right? The Histrian Peninsula? Um, yeah, it's a yeah. Histrian Peninsula. Oh, Histrian. Um, it's, it's both. Yeah, cool. <laughs> Fantastic. Um, and these guys, relatively small, but they are a Venetic faction. So they have their own culture. And is that, again, to symbolize the fact that, you know, they were lumped in as Illyrians, but maybe were their own thing again? Yeah, they're, um, they're somewhat Venetic, but also not quite. <laughs> um, they're mostly influenced by the Venetic peoples, but... Um, there's also a bit of Etruscan in there, there's a bit of Greek mm. in there, a little bit of Lurian, Yapodian, Libuan, basically everyone uh, around <laughs> them. Um, and we, we find Greek wares and ceramics from trade, um, also Etruscan wares. Um, they are probably most closely related to the Veneti, but um, it, it's all a bit um, complicated for, for the history and... Um, yeah, but nonetheless interesting um, because they are also uh, or have also settled there quite early on the history and peninsula. Um, I think even in the in the ninth century BC already, um, there are these kind of kinds of peoples. Um, oh, even earlier, I think tenth century, eleventh century BC. Um, Lot, lots wow. of bronze items and um, lots of um, trade, uh, traces of trade uh, throughout the ages, basically. But um, yeah, yeah, and uh, the historians, they are very interesting in in so far that we have them, um, we have evidence for them quite early, but um, again, they appear in the written sources quite late. So um, we have like Etruscan and Italian and Greek pottery already in the seventh century. You see, we have Daunian pottery, like Daunia, way down in um, Italy in the south. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, Rome, they are one of the peoples affected by Rome trying to secure its backyard. Um, Rome found a colony basically on the entrance to the peninsula um, called Aquileia. Um, we don't have it as a settlement, of course, because Rome founds it in, in the second century BC. And it's a really provocative move. And yeah. um, we, we have to guess that the Romans know that because um, <laughs> they, they just found a colony there and um, even the sources are like, huh, the Romans just couldn't really decide should, should it be a Latin colony or should it be a Roman colony. They decided that they make it a Latin colony and then they plant it there and the historians really get angry because like the Romans just settle on their border. <laughs> yeah. Maybe even partly in their land. And um, they then just, just invade Histria and have a few campaigns there and... Um, it's um, they fight a few battles. Um, the historians conquer uh, an almost abandoned camp of the Romans, and I think they even get a hold of the commander. <laughs> um, it's it's a bit it's a bit wild the the conquest of Histria. Um, then they have a king who is drunk, and um, and the Romans come back with with like an entire legion. Um, so they put they put effort in the conquest of history. They um, dedicate an entire consular legion um, with a standard strength of like two Roman legions and two allied legions during the Republic, um, and with that they enter history and conquer it. And um, there's again the stereotype of of Illyrian peoples being drunk. Um, that the because they partied so hard from ca capturing this abandoned camp that um, 
they all partied into the night and then the Romans attacked them. And the <laughs> oh, um, Ipulo, the history and king, had to be carried off from the table he was lying on and saved from the battlefield. He was then just put on a horse and sent away. I think 7,000 historians died in this battle. Oh my on this God. massacre. And oh, yeah, it's no. it's really wild, this, this, this conquest. It's also a pretty short affair, I think. So also, the Romans take it seriously. Um, but yeah, and um, they don't have... Um, the, the Romans don't hold them in high regards. Um, they are known as a against Enops or poor people. And um, yeah, they have their few um, coastal fortresses. And um, they import a lot of wares, but probably don't export a lot. Mm. Um, a few of their settlements. Those that don't get des destroyed by the Romans, um, the Romans destroy quite a few of their city cities. Um, but those that don't get destroyed, they, um, like uh, Tergeste and Pola, become uh, Colonia and a Caesar, and um, a few others become, uh, um, like Parentium becomes a muni municipium. Um, but. Um, the Romans urbanize more the coastal settlements, and the hinterland be stays more rural. Um, so yeah, it's I, you can feel a bit sorry for them. How yeah. The Romans treat them. I mean, imagine. But, I'm just thinking, like, imagine you're you're celebrating victory. You're like, yeah, let's all have a party and let's all get drunk. We've won a great victory against the Romans. This massive. Uh, um, you know, sort of dominant power <laughs> near us. And then you wake up the next day, they're like, um, king or chief or whatever, um, how are you doing? Like, oh, that, that party was wild, wasn't it? It's like, yeah, our whole army got killed. <laughs> while you were, oh, while you were passed out on the table, you'd be like, Not oh, again. worst <laughs> hangover ever. <laughs> oh, damn. No, really. Yeah. Um, you just, you can just feel sorry for them. Um, Honestly, sometimes yeah, so. the truth is stranger than fiction. Because if that was in a book or something, True. you would just be like, nah, that's just stupid. <laughs> but, <laughs> yeah, I mean, we read the sources and we look at them and are like, oh no, this this can't be, this is this is kind of too stupid. But then I, there's always something in my mind that goes, but maybe it's happened. It's, yeah. I mean, ru it's rumors... It's crazy to not be true. Yeah, but, rumors um, rumors always have a kernel of truth in the in the beginning of them, don't they? So yeah. <laughs> that is funny. The, the, the drunkenness is like a, a really favorite stereotype, as you may have noticed, of the Romans and Greeks for... Mm. But not just the Illyrians, but for barbarians in general. Like yeah. to the Greeks and Romans, there is nothing more bar barbarian than wearing pants and drinking your <laughs> wine unwatered. Like just just pure wine or pure beer. This is really barbaric. So so this drunkenness is always an expression of that you can't hold back. You you just have to drink your alcohol pure, and um, yeah. then you just die of the consequences, either in battle or or um, drinking it or. <laughs> Like just think. drinking it like like Agron and yeah. so um, <laughs> they they really like to build build into their stories that um, people were drunk. Yeah. Um, I think there's also an episode I I forgot why talking about the RDI, but there's also an episode where I guess they um, the the Celts fight against them so and the Celts notice that they drink so much then they mix like some stuff into their drinks and um, half of the Adia pass out and the others uh, flee into a river or something and drown because uh, of their stomach aches that they oh, get God. whatever the, the cats have mixed into their drinks <laughs> because they they kind of just just heard that the Illyrians drink so much so yeah um, really, wi really wild anecdotes you get um, yeah. from this area <laughs> <laughs> no, cool. It's really interesting anyway. It's really interesting. Well, there we go, guys. Thank you very much for watching the video. Of course, you can check out the longer video down in the description below. Make sure you do like and subscribe, and I'll see you all again on the next video.